it's it's been a while crocodiles <laughs> hi hello um, my name is Janine welcome to this channel it's been a minute I haven't posted anything on YouTube in ages now that I am uh, finished school and unemployed I have um, some time to do to do stuff like this I guess but anyways, enough rambling. I guess I better get into the whole point of this video, which is I want to share some of my favorite bookstores in London. I am definitely a huge lover of books, and over the year while I was there, I got to check out a bunch of really cool shops. If you're visiting London, or maybe if you've just moved to London and are a lover of books, definitely stay tuned. And if you just want to hear about fun London bookstores then awesome. <laughs> I could be wrong but I believe that all of the bookstores that I'm going to talk about are independent bookstores um, which is cool to support for sure. I've, London has a ton and so many. I mean there are so many that I didn't even get to while I was there but I guess it's good to save some for the future. I mean for sure if you're visiting London you should also check out Waterstones which is like the big chain bookstore there just because I mean the selection is unreal but but if you're looking for more like cool vibes cozy bookstores I think this list is gonna be for you. Oh, and if I haven't mentioned this already, I'm going to be talking about the bookstores and also just a couple of maybe fun things to do while you're in the area. So I'm going to start off with probably the most popular one on the list, um, or at least well known, which is Daunt Books. Um, they have a couple locations, but the Marlbone location is just so beautiful. I mean, they have such a huge selection of books. New releases, they've also got it sorted um, by countries, I believe. So if you're looking to like travel to a certain destination and want to read like books who maybe they're set there or like the authors are from there, that's really cool. And it's just, it's also just such a pretty bookstore. Like if you're looking for like an Instagram worthy one, I think Daunt Books is one to go for. This is actually one of the first bookstores I ever visited in London. So it has kind of like a special place in my heart. The area is really cool too. It's pretty near like the Baker Street tube stop so if you're looking for other fun activities the Sherlock Holmes Museum is really close by like right there um, and that's a fun little thing to do. And I believe the um, Wax Museum is nearby. I haven't been but that's a, another big touristy thing too. Okay, the next bookstore I want to mention is um, it's the Primrose Hill Books and it's such a cute little shop. I mean, again, named like from its Primrose Hill location, so it's in a great spot. Um, and this had a lot of it. It's a smaller store, but it still managed to have a lot of new and current titles. Um, and yeah, just a lovely atmosphere um, inside. The street that it's on is just so picturesque. Like it's when I think of London, like I think of streets that look like that. The location of it is so great because there's tons of little cafes. Like it'd be perfect to go for brunch in that area. Um, and of course Primrose Hill, which is like a a must-see spot in London for sure is right there. You have just like a panoramic view of the entire London skyline. And you could even like take a picnic there. I know lots of people do that or just like bring a bottle of whatever wine, champagne and have like drinks or something, watch the sunset. I feel like that would be a really cute idea. Primrose Hill is actually really close to the Camden Town tube stop so while you're there you also definitely should check out Camden Market. It's a really cool atmosphere, definitely different to the other more posher areas of London. I think Camden Town because it's more north London I would say. It's got a really cool artsy vibe to it, very eclectic. Definitely if if you're looking to explore more different areas of London, I would recommend the Primrose Hill with a with a side of Camden. <laughs> Another one that I love, and this might possibly be one of my favorites, is the London Review Bookshop, um, 
which is it's really close to the British Museum and it's a short walk to like Oxford Street where all the like huge shopping is and Russell Square Park is up there too. But one of the reasons why I love the London Review Bookshop is again because they have really like current and curated selection of um, new books which is amazing but it also has this like little cafe attached to it which is so cute and they've got a patio um, unfortunately when i was there it was raining so i couldn't sit out at it but yeah it's just such a it feels like such a warm and in, inviting space again i didn't take good pictures when i was there because there were just people and i was like <laughs> too nervous but I I think that's one of my top ones on this list for sure that I would that I would go back to again and again. Kind of switching up the vibe here a little bit um, is my, the next bookstore that I want to talk about. It's really cool because it's like a rare bookstore. So I mean it's more for like window shopping unless that's something that you're into. But just to be able to look at like all of these like antique novels is just really cool um and that's the the henry pords books i don't know if i'm pronouncing that right but i'll put the names and everything on the screen um it's really close to the intersection of charing cross and shaftesbury avenue so kind of like in the theater district so it's a super busy area so there's tons to do around there if you wanted to catch a show in the west end or hit up the bookstore before you do that. This bookshop was really cool. I just loved seeing all of the like old novels and it just so felt so cozy feeling. Like I feel like this would be a good store to visit in the fall. Um, and they also had a tons of like like vintage postcards and posters that you could buy too if you're looking for like a less expensive purchase because I think like rare books like that tend to be expensive. But yeah, they do They do have some cheaper items if you want to actually buy something instead of just window shopping. But the window shopping, I don't know, I still love doing that too. If you're looking to just look at like antique books or rare books or just like getting all of the like magical nostalgia vibes, um, Cecil Court, is, which is like a street, um, is... I think it's been dubbed like Booksellers Row or something like that, but it's basically just filled with like vintage bookstores and they're just so magical to walk through. I don't know if I have pictures, I'll have to see, but that's definitely like if you want to feel like you're in a movie or something, like that's definitely, I think, a street to check out because there are so many cool shops along there. The next bookstore is actually one in Chelsea, so kind of switching up the area a bit, um, and that's John Sandow Books. They're another independent bookseller, and the this, this store, I just feels like quintessentially British. I don't know, like when you think of like a bookstore, like a London bookstore, I don't know. like the atmosphere of this one comes to mind like it's just the creaky floors and like the antique rugs and i would say this one it it does have current titles for sure but i think it's definitely more of a mix of classics and current titles and some some more rare or vintage books um so the yeah it's a i think it's a good balance it's a good mix of things um so definitely if you're looking for classics i would recommend this one um and they they do also have new titles as well but they have a very curated selection just because it is such a small store that they can't obviously they can't fit everything that like say a waterstones would have but it's really cute it's just right by sloan square which is kind of a cool area again lots of shopping there and things to do. I think um, it's not too far from is it the Chelsea Flower Market or Flower Show or something like that. Uh, I'm blanking on the name. <laughs> I don't know if this would be a thing that people would know but if you've visited London you've probably seen a ton of these like blue plaques like all around the city um, and they sort of note like oh, like, this famous person lived here, like, more historical, like, figures and stuff like that, 
And um, there's a blue plaque for Bram Stoker, um, obviously he wrote Dracula, um, not too far from <laughs> from John Sandow. So I think it was like a 10 minute walk or something away. But so if you want to see where Bram Stoker lived, if you're a big Dracula fan, that also could be could be something to check off while you're in the area. The last couple I want to talk about, well, I guess the last three, are sort of, I'm amalgamating together because they're all uh, like Notting Hill area bookstores. I feel like Notting Hill was one of my favorite areas to explore just because, well, it was relatively easy for me to get to from where I lived and it's also just such a cute area. If you're looking to do brunch and books, I feel like Notting Hill is definitely, definitely a place to check out. And I mean, of course, like the most famous bookstore there is the Notting Hill Bookshop, um, which is from the movie Notting Hill with um, Hugh Grant and Julia Roberts. It's not um, in its original location, um, I guess it had to move like a few years ago, so now like the actual location from the movie is like a souvenir shop, but the actual bookstore still exists, it's just like a two minute walk away, and it's what like was the movie was inspired by, um, so it's, it's really cute, it's got a mixture of, um, like tons of new releases but also again the travel bookshop is part of it like in the back you can go and all the travel guides so if, if you're a big fan of the movie definitely that is a must see when you're while you're in London I mean it's it's really cute there's like a donut shop like right next to it and across the street um there's a book shop that sells like only cookbooks I can't remember what the name of it is now but so if you're into cooking that also would be a really cool one to check out and in Notting Hill, there's obviously Portobello Market, which is one of the huge draws of the area. Um, my favorite day to go was always Friday because they do the vintage markets that day. So there's all the cool like vintage furniture and knickknacks and also books. There's like this stall that sells like vintage books, which is again just really cool to wander through. Again, and that like the price range like a lot like you'd have some that were really cheap like more used books and then others that were expensive because they were like super old <laughs> or like rare yeah it's just really cute to see and i think definitely wandering through the market is like one of my favorite things to do in london and but i think also too like if you're if you're moving to london and have a flat that's relatively nearby i think the vintage market it would be a great place to pick up home decor last but not least for the notting hill area and also i guess for the video is um another bookstore that i love that is really cool is and i'm gonna butcher the name of it i think it's called lutians and rubenstein um it's Again, like right around the corner from the Notting Hill bookshop, um, maybe like a three minute walk, like it's it's right there, so really close by. And I don't know, there's just something about, it has like kind of more cool modern architecture. I don't know if that would be the way to describe it, but it's got tons of new titles. It's got a great kids section downstairs. Um, and it like it has this like really cool art installment on the ceiling that's like books hanging down. I've been there several times and it's always great when you go. I, I like the way that they organize the books. I don't know if that's a thing that like other people notice, but I find, you know, the more that I wander bookstores, you take notice of those kind of things. But I feel like I like the way that they're laid out there. But yeah, I guess that's it for the bookstore end of Notting Hill. Um, I think other things you can do in that area, again, Portobello Market is definitely a main one. I, I would, before you go, look up like what they do on each day because I think it runs maybe from Thursday to Sunday, the actual market is out, and I feel like that's definitely when you want to go. So many cool brunch spots in the area. I, one of my favorites, I think, is Granger & Co. There's another one, too, that I have um, that I went to that's sort of more closer to the tube stop. Um, that was really good. I'll, if I can find the name of it somewhere, I'll insert it. 
If you're looking for scones, there's a really cute scone place too that's like close to the tube station. Um, you'd pass it on your way. Um, and also too, walking down, I believe it's walking down Portobello Road, um, there's one of the blue plaques for George Orwell's house. So that's also could be a fun literature thing as well. I think that is it for this video. Hopefully this gave a good idea of what kind of independent bookstores there are in London. And again, I'm probably missing so many because they've like, the limit does not exist for how many bookstores there are in London. These are just a few, some of my favorites. If anyone has recommendations for really cool bookstores in Toronto, now that I'm home, I feel like I, I want to keep this trend going. So yeah, if anyone has some good bookstore recommendations, please let me know. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. <laughs>